In tonight's program, I introduce two new project guitars. Yeah. I go off on quite a long rant. And I ask for a bit of feedback on what we want to see in uh, 2015 on the new channel, and I talk about just some of the direction I'm aiming to take the channel in. So I wanted you to have some idea of what you're in for. Thanks, it's really a long video. Stay tuned if you like that, and uh, if you're looking for a repair video, stay tuned. There's stuff like that coming. So that there is yet another Squire Affinity Strap. It actually came to me with a totally different neck, one which I've since taken off and replaced with the original neck that this guitar was born with. I actually bought this guitar with two necks. The reason I want to introduce this guitar real quickly is um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it, to be perfectly honest. I was going to throw a new pickguard into it and new pickups and a bunch of stuff, but I'm just not sure I'm there yet. So I'm going to have to pull the strings back off and give this a fret level because it needs it. Can you see that? It's totally dead arrow straight. So in fact, the measurements on this guitar right now are Fender specification. This, this black one wasn't even the one I wanted to set up. The only reason I bought this guitar is because it came with two necks and I needed a neck for a different body I have. So I'm going to pause the video right now and I'm going to go grab that guitar. Alright, so I don't know if I've shown this in any of my videos. I must have. I've had this body for quite a while and I was told when I bought it that it was just a Squire body. So I believed it. It's a plywood body. So there you go. So it's a plywood body. Alright. and. It's not, I mean, it's a nice sunburst, I like it. It's really, it's not in terrible shape. There was a little problem here in the heel. This has started to chip away. Um, but anyway, here's the real point of this video. And the real point of this video is, so this is the neck, the, see the fat head style stock neck that came installed on that black one. And my original plan was to put that skinny neck that's on it now on this guitar. Well, it just didn't fit. Thought, well, I've got this leftover neck, let's just see if I can make this fit. And this is where my hobby woodworking experience comes in. I was able to fit this tight to the pocket because it wasn't going, it wasn't, it wasn't meeting right down here at the end. It was, there was probably, oh, I don't know, at least two or three mil gap between this and here. And what I've read is that it's okay if you've got a little bit of room here and here on either side but not in the middle. This should be flush here in the middle. These two should be touching. So the neck uh, is on this one is level in the pocket. It's straight and now it's down to here and I did stick a bridge on there and I measured it from the 12th fret to the bridge and we're good. We're good. We're gonna have enough room to move those saddles back and forth so that our scale length is is still okay. So I don't even know if that's a Squire body. It's definitely not a Fender body. So I wonder if it's just one of those off-brand like Ashbury or whatever you see so often. It's, the other curious thing is that these holes did not line up with either of those necks. So, and the other thing too is that these holes I find on so many necks aren't big enough for the bolts to just slip through. You want these holes to be big enough for the, th th that's where my hobby woodworking experience pops in. When you're trying to, when you're trying to screw together two pieces of wood, you want your entry hole to be just enough for the screw to pass through without any of the threads catching. And what you want it to grab into is what you're trying to tighten up onto. So that's the neck. So you want these neck holes to be good and tight. But you want these to be loose because you want, what happens is, if you drive the screw in and it's and it's winding its way around your first piece, so this is just standard hobby wood, this is just standard woodworking knowledge. This has nothing to do with guitars. This is just, it just is how you should screw together two pieces of wood. So the idea is if you get these and they're too small and you find like you're threading it through this initial hole, just ream it out a bit, just take uh, a drill bit that's slightly, slightly bigger than the hole is already, and whoosh, ream it up. And even if it's in, and even if it's well too big, it's still okay. 
And it's still okay in this instance because if this hole is well too big, I mean, you don't want it. You don't want a hole like this for a little screwdriver. But I'm talking about like just a, t t a bit of gap so that it's loose in there. It's okay, I would say, on a neck because then it allows me to pull the neck into alignment. Then there's enough room in these holes to just drive the neck, you know, a slight, a slightly this way or slightly that way. So it gives you a bit of room to maneuver in the pocket. And to me, that's, <laughs> that's how I screw together two pieces of wood. Um, so it has nothing to do with guitar building or guitar building experience. That, that to me is just, this makes sense. Uh, I've gotten this to the point where I can hold it and it's in there good and tight. Right. You wanna be able to pick up the neck where the body's not gonna fall off of it, right? So that's pretty good and tight and strong. All right, so at one point I had decided, at one point before I fixed the neck pocket, I, I decided I wasn't even gonna fix this guitar. I was just gonna sell it with the neck and, uh, and be done with it. But then I thought, well, how much fun would that be? I mean, it's kind of the reason I'm on YouTube, right? So, so I think I'm gonna try and put this one together. Now, obviously this neck and this body weren't born together and I'm gonna have a little bit of fighting to do with it to get it. Like, so far, the measurements are pretty good. Next, sitting in there straight and level and everything like that it wasn't actually too much trouble. So the way I fixed, the way I fixed this is actually really simple. So if we pull this neck out, it's actually quite tight now. And we look in the neck pocket, so you can see what I've done is I've gone around, and the problem was that this whole pocket needed to be a bit, a bit tighter radius. Uh, it was too rounded, so the neck was the neck was only coming up to about there. So this radius here was just was too tight. It came around like that. So I had to go in there with a chisel, a nice sharp chisel on its end, and just clean out these corners. And that's all I've done. I've just cleaned them out from top to bottom. Could use a little sanding, but it's not the end of the world. But yeah, now it fits perfectly. Now the neck, when we try to put it on, actually fits in there nice and tight. So we're good. Okay, so without promising too much here in the way of videos coming, because I know I have promised a few videos that haven't materialized, chief among which was that that Telecaster. Remember that Telecaster I showed in the update video a while back, just around New Year's? I shot a bunch of video for that. I was moments away from completing the damn thing and then the owner changed his mind about the pickups and decided he didn't no longer one of them. He didn't realize that he'd bought stacked humbuckers and he thought Anyway, so those Klein pickups went into that telly. <laughs> they were like that far from being completed and the owner changed his mind. So I never did get them in there. Uh, so that's a long story. I'm just not even gonna bother telling you. If you're thinking about buying Klein pickups, just a side note here, I tried dealing with the company over a period of about two weeks to try and get some wiring diagrams for their pickups. So their, their humbuckers, their stacked humbuckers are for conductor wire. Now that's not hard to figure out. I'm not a retard. I can figure that out. You can just test one wire and then test for continuity on the other three and then you can find the pairs. That's not a real big deal. You can work that out. But I wanted their wiring diagram to identify the stacks. Now that's another thing I can go ahead and I can figure that out. I can figure out which stack is which. I can identify the two pairs of wires, right, by testing for continuity. And then you can sort of work out with a stacked humbucker with a little bit of testing which is which because it does make a difference which one you wire um, in which way. Well, yes and no. And again, it's like 50% odds. You wire it one way, you don't like it, you wire it another way. So yes, I can work all that out. That's not hard to work out. But when you contact a company like Klein who makes boutique pickups that are really fucking expensive, don't you think that on their website they'd have some wiring diagrams or that you could Twitter them or Facebook them or something? Because they're on all that social media, but forget about trying to get a response from them on any social media. That was fucking O for about 10. Then I finally called them, left my name, a nice message, hey, I'm looking for a wiring diagram, no phone call, no nothing. 
Then I emailed them three or four times looking for wiring diagrams. Again, nice email. Hey, I'm looking for a wiring diagram for this specific pickup. I get finally a response back from these cocksuckers, and I am going to flash that up here on the screen. Maybe you should have a train tech install your pickups for you. Like, seriously? I'm asking you for a PDF. Just email it to me. And you sent... I'm not just... And not just... They didn't just send me a simple, maybe you should have a tech, but a long diatribe about how I shouldn't be fiddling around with this stuff if I don't know what I'm talking about or I don't know what I'm doing. Seriously? You seriously email a company that's trying to sell stuff that's expensive that I cannot go into a store and buy. So you're trying to get people to buy stuff and, 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 and the only place I can get this stuff is either used or on eBay or through you or through one of your dealers. I cannot just walk into a store and buy Klein pickups. I have to order them, which means I have to want them. <laughs> and if you're treating people like this, like, yeah, no, I didn't buy those pickups. But they don't know that. I said, I got a set of your telly pickups. Can I have a wiring diagram? Like if you emailed Fender or if you Twittered Fender or Gibson or some of those other places, they'd be all over you in about 30 seconds to, to point you to that stuff. You know what I mean? Like, or Seymour Duncan, for fuck's sakes. Like, why would I go buy Klein pickups when Seymour Duncan has, like, they are, they are the internet authority for wiring diagrams. Right? I mean, that's where I get all my wiring diagrams is Seymour Duncan. I'm sure there are others, but they have the, the widest selection of them. So if you're Klein pickups, if you are Klein pickups, and you're trying to sell very expensive boutique pickups, why wouldn't you put up some PDFs on your website? Look at PDFs. <laughs>
and showing other people that you too, you can learn, if you learn anything from me, the only thing I want you to learn from my channel is that you can do this stuff yourself. And there are plenty of ways for you to work around the specialty tools. Some of them, yeah, you're going to eventually have to buy if you're doing this enough. But to do it at yourself at home with just your own guitar or your own couple of guitars, that's what I want to show people. I want to show people that you can do this yourself and that there are plenty of clever ways to modify your own guitars. And even if you're not doing crazy things like painting them or putting stickers on them or fucking changing the headstock or any of that kind of stuff, if you just want it to play well, and that's always my main goal with a guitar. Yes, I get caught up in aesthetics, but I always want it to play well. And that's always been my main focus. And that's generally the focus of my channel, is I want to show people that with a story about each guitar, that you can do this yourself at home. And more recently, I've wanted to show people that you don't need to spend a million bucks buying guitars. You just don't. <laughs> people argue with me all the time about how good these squires are. They're awesome. I'm sorry. <laughs> For those of you who have headstock shame, uh, I don't have headstock shame. Let me grab, let me grab a proper squire. <laughs> there was a fucking guy who went on. I got him wow wound up uh, uh, on that white guitar. This is for you, buddy. I think your name's William. Okay. My focus, even though I do videos about repair, is learning to play better. That's what I want. I want a guitar that plays better, sounds better, uh, and looks cool. And best kept secret right here, Squires. It's true.